If you're looking to enhance your athletic performance or just get in a little bit better shape, look no further than Forza Sports. Forza Sports has everything you need for men, women, and children to take their training to the next level. From football to tennis, baseball to running, even hunting and paintball, Forza Sports can check off all the boxes. And of course, for the aspiring combat sports athlete, Forza Sports is your one-stop shop for punching bags, including aqua training bags, boxing and MMA gloves, headgear, geese, and much more, all at competitive prices. To save even more money, sign up for savings and get the latest deals at ForzaSports.com. Forza Sports has been serving the athletic community and more for over a decade and look forward to serving you for generations to come. Get the best gear in sports right now at ForzaSports.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MyMMANews.com. I am Ryan Sprague on the line and uh, kind of enjoying an interesting day off. You know, it was an impromptu day off. The sun is shining. Got a, a lot that I want to do, but, you know, always, always enjoy and always make time for one of my favorite people in the world to talk to. We've got him on the line, uh, Mr. Lou Giordano of Nutrition, Sir. It is good to see you again. Good to hear from you. Glad to have you talking everything UFC, my man. Listen, it's always, this is my favorite show to be on. I've been saying that for a long time, and you are my favorite, hands down, not even one of. So it's an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to be on again. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Always, man. So, um, you know, you, you, you kind of, you were working with a couple of fighters. You know, we're still working with Shorty and Val Laredo, but... You recently had to board a, a flight, sir. Yeah, yeah, kind of uh, about last Wednesday. I was, I was on a flight um, to Houston, Texas. Yep, you are down in Houston, Texas. And one thing I can say about that, it's kind of hot down there, isn't it? Man, I am not used to this Texas heat. And it's funny because in New Jersey, uh, prior to me flying out here, it, it's been extremely warm. It was like in the 80s um, still. And um, and I got to Texas, and it's just a whole different kind of heat. It's just, <laughs> Texas heat is just like no other heat I've ever felt. Uh, that is definitely true. I can say that having lived in Austin. But, Lou, I have to ask you a question. Is there a specific part of you in particular that's hot? Uh, you know, working with the guy that I'm working with, yeah. I mean, you know, this, this guy's balls are always hot. So, therefore, when you're just around him, you kind of heat up and... Uh, you know, it's a good, uh, it's a good kind of hot. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly a good way of putting it. You know. <laughs> well, obviously, the word is out. We saw on your Instagram. You know, we talked to you a little bit about it when uh, everything was kind of official, and you were down in Houston. You, sir, are working with Derek Lewis, who is going to be the co-main event at UFC 244 in Madison Square Garden, Lou. Man, you have been through everything when it comes to MMA fighters, Bellator, UFC, Shorty, who's working with Brave. You know, you've worked with some of the greats. You've worked with John Jones. You've worked with Johnny Hendricks. You worked with Val Lareda. You're working with Derek Lewis now. How's, how's the training camp going as, as far as you're, you're about five days in now? Uh, you know what, man? It's, it's been amazing. I, I got to, to speak with Derek and his team uh, about a month ago. So technically, we have been working together for uh, a month. I was kind of managing his weight from home, you know, when I first got the phone call. And, um, you know, we, we, we all agreed. It was funny. It was one of those things where I had an, uh, uh, an idea of what I'd like him to weigh and asked them, and we were all on the same page. The number was the same for all of us. And it was a great conversation, and, and I got to be honest, being out here, you know, being in this camp, it's it's been nothing but amazing and interesting, you know, because Derek's personality is not like anybody else's that I've been around, and uh, he's he's just an amazing an amazing person, genuine, quiet but funny, and and sometimes it's tough to read all those things, you know, and it's just been amazing to uh, we just have some fun, man. We're really just having fun. And that's, that's what it should be, and that's the way it, it needs to be, you know? Absolutely. And Derek is definitely a personality, not just in the heavyweight division, but in all of MMA. We all know his one-liners. We all know the successes that he's had. But I've got to be honest, I was, I was a little shocked for you to say that all of you were on the same page 
as far as the weight and the number that he wanted to be at, I thought Derek might come back with a little bit of negotiations and say, well, well why don't we start here and we'll meet somewhere in the middle? No, you know, the only thing that Derek wanted to negotiate on was, uh, you know, being able to have Popeye's chicken every day. And uh, that was his only negotiation. But as far as the actual weight itself, um, we all kind of agree, you know, myself, Derek, uh, Coach Bob, and even his manager, Lou, uh, we, we all kind of hovered around the same number. And it was it just felt good to know that we're all on the same page and this is where we're going to get to. And nothing's going to kind of get in our way of getting there. And let me tell you, it, it's everything is going according to plan. He is, I mean, he's just a scary dude. I mean, he's just a scary dude watching him train. And um, it's just, again, I, I'm smiling ear to ear because it's just been such an amazing, you know, um, and just a different experience, but different in a good way. That's right. And with Derek... It, 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 it had to have been a little interesting with you the first time you met him, trying to reason with him and say, give me this, you're, you're going to be eating this from now on. Um, you know what, he, he, it's, <laughs> it's funny, because he doesn't really show too much you know, emotion or expression, he, he's a fan of dry humor as, as myself, but when you don't know a person, it's tough to read their dry humor. So, you know, I'm giving him food and I can't tell if he likes it or not, you know. Um, his coaches are assuring me that, like, no, if Derek doesn't like something, he's throwing that shit across the room. So, um, I, I, you know, up until this point, there have been no complaints, no issues, um, minor adjustments, minor tweaks here and there. And, you know, the, the, biggest thing, the hardest thing, you know, when you get somebody, and Derek's obviously been very open about not having the best diet, right? He doesn't eat this food. And doesn't eat a lot of food, but when he eats, or a lot of meals, if he doesn't eat one big meal, then he'll snack. You know, so to try to get them to eat smaller portions and a fewer, you know, a fewer more meals, it becomes a little more challenging, but we're at the point now where his body's starting to ask for more nutrients, which is, which has been amazing. Um, and, and that's all I could ask for, so it's a great sign. That's awesome. But does Derek ever get hangry with you? Not yet, but the funny thing is, is right before we did this, you know, I know we were supposed to do this about 20 minutes prior, and, and right as I was getting ready to jump on this interview, got the text message, I'm starting to get hungry, you know, uh, which is, it just makes me laugh because he's definitely starting to eat more now than he did, you know, just a few days ago, which means uh, that he's not only following protocol, which we know is extremely important, especially in my system, um, to follow protocol to a T, but that means that his body is responding really well because his weight is still coming down and he's now getting hungrier and he's still just as fast, just as strong. Um, he's now drink more water. I mean, he went from barely drinking, you know, I don't even know if he was getting a half a gallon a day. After this morning's back-to-back -back double session, he was almost finished with a gallon already. You know, so it just shows me that his body's responding and absorbing really well. And, and again, it's only been five days that I've been out here. Derek did a great job prepping the few weeks before I got out on my leave, but man, now with me out here, it's just going to be that much better, that much more impactful, and, and we're going to peak at the right time, and it's going to be a really exciting night, um, you know, come, uh, come November 2nd. Oh yeah, November 2nd can't come soon enough for a lot of the fight fans out there, as obviously you have Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal fighting for the baddest motherfucker belt at welterweight division, the main event. But, you know, it's funny with Derek dropping weight. We know that he's going to increase speed, but he's not going to lose any power. But the big question that comes in that we, we kind of always circle around a little without jumping directly into the question is when it comes to Derek, losing weight is one thing, but keeping power is the other. It's not just... Losing weight to make the weight on the scale and then going back. He's actually going to step on the scale. And then the rehydration is already done. He's not going to have to rehydrate. So what does that do for his body leading up to this fight? So, and that's a great point, Ryan. And, and, and you'll understand this, you know, maybe more than most, right? Because you've also trained and you've done some weight cuts with me. You and I have kind of had some fun with it. So you know what it feels like kind of cut down and then rehydrate up, right? And you hear fighters talk about this all the time. 
you know, they, they, or coaches say this all the time that, you know, oh man, they, they look great in the gym. And then when they get in the cage, they kind of feel flat or their cardio is not as good. And there's a lot of different reasons, but, but one of the main reasons that they feel great in the gym is because they're not cutting any weight. There's no stress on the mind and on the body from cutting weight. Um, so the goal is to get there to our goal weight as soon as possible. And we're pretty close to that already. And then keep him there for the remainder of the camp. So that way when he goes into fight, his body feels no different than just another day in the gym. The only difference, it's three five-minute rounds versus him doing two-a-days, three-a-days, which he's doing now. And he's just, you know, destroying these workouts um, versus three five-minute rounds. Um, so... There is no rehydration process. It's literally let's let Derek wake up when he wants. We know probably it's going to be a 9 to 11 weigh in, and if he gets up at 8.30, we weigh in at 9. If he sleeps till 10, we weigh in at 10. And we're going to just eat and drink like we've been doing this whole camp. And, um, you know, Derek's going to get to do what Derek wants to do as far as what he needs to do to get ready mentally. But physically, the work's being done now, and that's the beauty of it, you know. We're going to finally go into fight week with Derek Lewis with no stress of needing to cut any weight. It's literally going to be Derek gets to do what Derek wants and relax and just stay fed, stay hydrated. And, man, it's it's going to be a really – listen, Ryan, I, I've said this before, man. I've done a bunch of interviews about other fighters that I've worked with, and I, and I meant it when I said these things that, you know, uh, this person looks phenomenal and this person's mental toughness and – they look great and they're going to perform great. It's, I believe everything that I said. I never said anything that I didn't believe. But I, there's just something about this man that is just different. And and it is I, November 2nd just can't come soon enough. I, I don't need to talk about what I think is going to happen or this. I just, I just can't wait for it to happen so that I can then say, I told you so. And we are all waiting for that to happen. But there is a flip side to this. You're going to hit weight way ahead of schedule, you're going to be there. A lot of times when people go on diets, and you're, you're seeing me do those, those finger parentheses, oh, yeah. those air parentheses, when people go on diets, they go on diets until they hit the target weight, and then they go off the diet. You know, hey, the, the goal has been achieved, right? So now everything's right. all good. And then they find themselves slipping back into their old habits, and then that weight that they lost slowly starts to come back on. Is that something that crosses your mind that might happen with Derek? It crosses my mind with, with everybody I work with because it does happen. I mean, and a part of the reason it happens is, is because they realize that when they finally follow my protocol for the first time, as you know, Ryan, everybody that I've ever worked with, the first time we've always made weight and looked great physically and felt great um, the first time. And that's because what happens is, is they, some people tend to get a little bit more comfortable with how easy it was. And then they start to get maybe a little bit heavier in the off season. And, and, you know, the mistakes that I made in the past were allowing that to happen or not putting my foot down. Um, and I just think that this is a different Derek Lewis where he's at mentally. And the reason, you know, you want to get this, you know, you want to get the athlete close to their weight uh, as soon as possible because that's longer their body has to now become that walk around weight, you know, so versus him being as heavy as he was, cutting a bunch of weight, weighing in, and then he gets back up for that much. If he stays a healthy, leaner version of himself for a long period of time, man, his metabolism is just going to be more efficient. He's going to feel a lot better. His joints are going to feel a lot better. And he's more likely to stay around there. And Derek's serious about, you know, making a run for the belt and, and, and holding on to it for a really long time. And he understands that nutrition is – a very important role. So I feel very confident um, that, that he's going to maintain what he needs to maintain after this uh, and for a long, long time coming. And the fact that you have a person like Derek Lewis understanding the importance of a healthy diet, you know, nutrition, walking around lighter is pretty much half the battle. And again, I'm not saying that Derek doesn't take that seriously, but we've, we, we know Derek's mannerisms. We've heard that dry humor you spoke of, but you know, a couple of weeks ago, he posted on his Instagram, he kind of teased at working with you, saying, you know, I'm not cu uh, cutting weight, I'm losing it. Nutrition's motto, your motto, you know, we're not losing weight, we're managing it. So you've kind of cut out the middleman there. Uh, with Derek walking around lighter, 
His speed is just going to go through the roof. How dangerous is that going to make him against Blago Avanov? <laughs> Again, you know, I, I know, like I said, I've said this in the past. I've gotten, I've been blessed to not only work with, with some of the best fighters in the world, but I've also been blessed to be in some of the best camps in the world. So you get to watch other people train and, and do things. And much respect to everybody. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for everybody. Um, but <laughs> I, I don't even know. How to, I, I don't even know what to say, Ryan. Watching this man move and hit mitts, it's so deceptive. He is so deceptively fast and athletic. And with him being lighter, that just means he's even more athletic and faster. And he's from what his coaches are telling me, he's he's stronger than than he's ever been because he's feeling better, you know, and he has better endurance. So it's all going to translate. It's all going to come together. And, you know, much respect to Derek's opponent, but it's, it's going to be a fun night November 2nd. There he is. <laughs> And you mentioned Derek walking around lighter and being faster. But you and I can put this myth to bed, but let's go ahead and do this for everybody to hear now. Walking around lighter doesn't mean that you're walking around weaker. You know, when I was 205 pounds, you know, yeah, it, I was told that when, when I'd throw a leg kick, it, it, would, it would send shockwaves. Well, then when I ended up getting down to 160, right about where I am right now, that strength didn't go away. Why is that? No. It, you know, people get that confused all the time, and, you know, strength has no effect. I mean, size has no effect on strength. It, it has no effect on it. I mean, sure, the bigger guy with more muscle mass theoretically should be able, you know, to, to lift more weight, but we're not talking about just lifting weight. Speed plays a factor, you know? Um, a, a pickup truck going 50 miles an hour that crashes into something versus a Lamborghini going 200 miles an hour crashing into that same thing, what do you think is going to have a greater impact? You know, that Lamborghini going 200 miles an hour is most certainly going to do more damage than that, you know, that truck going 50 miles an hour. Um, and, you know, I, I learned this a long time ago when I was, when I was running the Taekwondo school, one of the Taekwondo masters, he, he couldn't have been more than, you know, maybe 5'9", and maybe 150 pounds. And let me tell you something. The, the, the power that this man possessed with his kicks, I, I put him up against you know any any 205er with, with the way that he kicks. So there's technique involved, and, and some people are just blessed with power. Look at Mike Tyson, you know? Every person he ever fought was bigger than him. Did they hit harder than him? No. Um, so, and Derek's just got freakish power. So as long as he's not super dehydrated, you know, that power is not going anywhere. If anything, it, it, you're probably going to feel it more because it's going to come at you much faster, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So with Derek, if I'm okay to ask this, we know sure. what the weight limit is at UFC heavyweight. Where does Derek yeah. want to be when he steps on that scale? What is We're going to be under that. Our, our, our goal is to be under that by, uh, you know, maybe five pounds, 10 pounds, maybe more, maybe less, but we're, we're gonna be under that, that's the goal. You know, Derek's a guy who, who would cut weight to make the limit every fight week, you know, and that's not happening this time. We're not, we're not cutting weight, we're managing it right now, and his weight will be managed, and uh, there will be no weight cut, and there will be no, um, you know, needing the weight limit. So we're gonna definitely be coming in underneath, underneath the 265 limit for sure, which is not something Derek has done from what I was told, if I can remember correctly, maybe his first or second pro fight, you know, maybe it's been that long. So what does that mean for the training? If he's walking around lighter, that would have to mean that his training can actually increase in intensity, right? 100%, and it's been, I mean, today was brutal, brutal, and he just, it just it's, again I'm laughing because it's, it's you know it's just something I, I can't even describe what I'm seeing it's just an amazing thing I've actually been amazed at what I'm witnessing um, and, and all due respect to to again everybody that I've been around and work with you know um, some people's work ethic is certainly you know more than others uh, but it, it's just amazing to watch a person as big as Derek move the way that he moves and you know he doesn't 
make compete, man. He's just so mentally tough. It's 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 kind of uh, I want to say intimidating in a sense. It's not intimidating. It's 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 it's, it's intimidating if you're you know his, his opponent. But it's 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 motivating really to just see somebody who just has this mental toughness that it's just scary, man. I can't say enough about it. It's it's it's, it's very scary. Well, you've been in Houston for, like you said, just under a week. You've been working with Derek for almost a month as far as making sure he's following a guideline and a protocol. So what does he like to do in between those doubles? Or if he ends up taking a day that he's not training? I don't know. You know this better than I do. If UFC fighters, you don't want to train seven days a week. The increased chances of having an injury are definitely real. So what would he do on downtime? So it depends, you know, there, there are a lot of different theories on, on that. And my theory and my philosophy on it is, I believe in, in, in active recovery. I don't like taking a day where you literally do nothing. You know, especially if we have some weight to lose, um, which is usually most of the case with most fighters, you know? Um, so, you know, an off day can simply be just going for a walk outside, maybe sitting in the sauna. That's you're still getting some work in, but it's a very, very light day. You know, you're not you're not doing anything you know massively intense. But I got to tell you, the one thing that I love about being in this camp with Derek is we're very similar in, in a lot of ways. Um, the way that we like our food, you know, uh, spicy food, all the meat has to be well done. You know, so it's it's fun for me because I get to cook the way that I eat personally. Um, but Derek's a homebody. He he loves spending time with his with his family. He he loves being around his family, and and you know it's great for me because it gives me a lot of downtime then to continue trying to you know uh, just work on things that I'm working on when I'm not focused on Derek um, because he's a homebody man. He likes to be home. He likes to be with his family, and I just. That's how I was raised. That's how I was brought up, and I have nothing but respect for that. Not that there's anything wrong with going out and doing, you know, whatever you want to do. And I've certainly been in those camps as well. But you know, it's 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 kind of nice to to be in a camp where, you know, the downtime is just that. It's it's relaxing, and I'll get a random text message. You know, I'm starting to get hungry, or you know, I'm craving some cookies, and then I got to come up with something real quick to uh, to kind of calm that crave down and. You know, when he happened the other night, he, uh, he texted me that he was, he was kind of craving cookies. And I was like, I got you. I'll be there in 15 minutes. You know, don't, you know, because I'm not too far from him. And, and I brought him an apple with some peanut butter, some honey, and some cinnamon. And he looked at me like, really? This is what you're giving me? Um, but hey, guess what? He ate it. He didn't eat the cookies. So, you know, he's listening, which is great. <laughs> and it's great showing. I mean, listen, this is, this is no secret. Derek posted it. You know, he, st he started at like 295 or 298. And, a few weeks ago, you know, after training, he was like 275, you know, so um, our weight's doing really, really good, man. I'm really happy with where we're at and, um, and, and where we're going. It's, it's, it's just, it's just, it just feels right. You know, it's one of those things, Ryan, that just feels right. That sounds awesome. And I'm, I'm glad to get some kind of example of those food cravings because with Derek, you know, you're probably going to get a lot of curveballs. You know, I remember you saying something where you ended up getting him food and he, he, wanted, he wanted cheese and he wanted... Man. Uh, you know, uh, the, the biggest curveball probably, you know, you know, the first few days that I was out here, every morning he kept complaining about a stomachache. And my first thought was, oh my God, is, like, is my food making him sick? Am I going to have to get sent home? Like, what's going on? And I'm, you know... I'm like having a nervous breakdown. You know how I get, Ron. Like I'm, I'm obviously I really care about the, the fighter that I'm working with, and I'm overly concerned. Come to find out, like four days, three days, or four days in, he decides to finally tell. I mean, after I already made him, I call him great. That's awesome. But you know, I've made him crazy and, and tasty foods that you know he has some acid reflux every once in a while, and I'm like, why the fuck did you tell me that sooner, man? I would have never made these things, you know. So. He's just, he's, he just, he just does his thing. He just, <laughs> so I'm definitely getting my curveballs for sure. And, uh, but I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not no stranger, as you know, to, to dealing with some, some crazy things that I got to adjust to on the flop. I, just, I can deal with a little acid reflux. It's not a big deal. Now, he, he isn't the kind of fighter that you have to worry about chaining up his refrigerator, is he? 
No, I, you know, I'll tell you, the only thing that I have to worry about with Derek, I don't worry about that with him. And I can tell that just based off the phone call. I mean, when we first spoke, I don't know, it was maybe half months ago, I took a, a big leap of faith um, and leave behind what I was doing. Um, and I only was able to do that because I truly believed that he was really ready to take the serious, you know? Um, so I don't worry about him doing that. The, the, the thing that I worry about is, is Derek's mental toughness is, is so much that, Again, even something as simple as, as having Harper and like he's just not gonna say it. Like he's not gonna let you know that there's anything wrong because of how mentally tough he is. I mean, I it, and and that's that's the challenge. It's like, you know, I need to know those things or your coach needs to know if something doesn't feel right, but he's so so mentally tough that you wouldn't even know if something was like dramatically wrong with him. And it's a challenge. It's, I'm not worried about him. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have to change. He's not. I hold the Sharif Torres when I got to worry every three seconds that he's putting something in his mouth and he shouldn't. And uh, pun intended for that one. <laughs> so, so does he have a favorite food that you make for him? Is there one that he requests more than others? I would say, uh, I mean, um, he loves. I make him pepperoni and eggs in the morning with some spinach, which is my favorite thing. I eat that all the time. And, uh, he loves it, man. He even, he's asked for it for dinner. He's asked for it for lunch. So um, he's become a big fan of that. And um, that's probably one of his favorites uh, that I would have to say thus far. Wow. You're going to have to send me that recipe later because that sounds actually really damn good. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's my favorites. And, and, you know, a lot of people in those, those hardcore nutritionists and registered dietitian. Oh, you're giving him pepperoni. It's such a bad meat. Like, calm down, man. It's, it's just a few slices. It's okay. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, so that and actually, you know, because he does have a sweet tooth and um, I obviously have to calm that craving, especially if we get later into the, the night because I've been eating cookies and all that stuff. So um, I was fortunate enough to have um, uh, the beautiful Charlie Sage, owner of Project Align, uh, make this. She made this recipe for me a while ago. There, it's like with, with protein powder, plant-based protein powder, gluten-free oatmeal, some honey, vanilla extract, shredded coconut, white chocolate chips. Because Derek doesn't like uh, chocolate, and and um, you know you kind of make these like little cookie things. And um, as long as he doesn't eat all of them, uh, it kind of calms that sweet tooth down, and it makes me happy because it's still in the category of being remotely healthy. So you know I do have to give uh, Charlie credit for that one. SP and uh, Project Line because um, it definitely came in handy because he's been craving some sweet stuff and that apple and peanut butter just wasn't doing it for him. So I had to call an audible on that one. Well, Lou, you are going to be in Houston with him until fight camp's over. And then, of course, you'll get to return basically to your part of the country when he fights at Madison Square Garden. But while you're there, as a nutrition or as a weight management specialist for Derek and you're trying to set a good example, are you able to sample the flavors of Houston? Oh, man. And right before we cut on this, this uh, I'll send you a picture. I ain't going to post it because I got shit for it. But right after uh, our training session today, I sent Derek home with his healthy food. And I went right to this barbecue place because I do a fast. I fast all morning. And, <laughs> and I, got, I got almost a pound of brisket and three pancakes and just housed it. Um, even the woman was like, are you sure you want that much meat? I said, just put that shit on a plate. Don't worry about it. And oh my God, it was so good. And, um, I'm certainly going to indulge a little bit more here and there, but you know, I'm, I'm obviously cautious about two things. One, you know, you know me, Ryan, I don't like to put that stuff in my fighters faces when they're cutting weight or if they're eating healthy, you know, I'm going to do it with them. Um, and obviously, you know, I don't want to eat bad all the time, but Man, that brisket and pancakes for something special. So uh, I think I'm going to try some. I've been told that there's some really good Mexican places out here. And um, what else was Some Mediterraneans. I'm definitely going to, you know, indulge. But I'm just, I'm spending more time trying to get Derek's schedule down um, before I can kind of figure out, you know, where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. Derek's doing doubles. You're there with him. You're grabbing him food. You're making sure he's eating healthy. What does the weight management specialist do when he's in the gym and his fighter is going through the camp, when he's going through the hour and a half or the two hours worth of fighting and stretching and training that he's doing? Well, I think this is one of the things that separate, there's a lot of things that separate me from the other people in this industry that do what uh, that they do. And I won't even say that we do the same things we don't. 
But one of the things, one of the dramatic things is, is you know, I, I'm with my fighter for majority of the camp, and I like to be with them. I like to watch them train because I get to watch their energy levels. I get to see how much they're sweating. I get to see when they're tired. I get to pick the, the spots that maybe I'm giving them something to hydrate. Maybe I'm giving them, you know, a little bit of honey, some sugar, or, or maybe, you know, it's time for a meal. Or So being there is vital, you know, and then that way, if they have any concerns or questions, you know, if there's any issue, we could address it right then and there. It's not like busy or I'm too big time and I'm working with some other person and I got some minion, you know, doing my dirty work. Um, so I love to be with my athlete when they're in the thick of it, when they're training it. If they're in the sauna, I'm in the sauna with them. If they're going for a run outside, I'm running with them. Um, that's just kind of the way that I am, and, and that's the way that I'll always be with, with my clients. And, you know, uh, plus it keeps me in shape too, so I don't mind it. I mean, I can't imagine you really need a sauna being in Houston right now. Uh, that, that pretty much is, in, is a sauna in and of itself. It, it, it is, but it's at night. You know, I kind of like Derek getting in his sauna. He's got a really nice sauna at his house, and I kind of like him sitting in there at night as well. He gets a really good sweat during the workouts in the morning. Um, but, you know, somebody his size and drinking and eating as much as he is, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. Remember, you know, when you're working out and sweating, it's very different than sitting in a sauna and sweating. You know, when you're working out, you're burning calories, you're using fuel and you're sweating. When you're sitting in a sauna, you're not really burning calories, you're just sweating. So you kind of want a combination of the both. You know, and I've been saying this for years. I'm one of the only one that has been saying it for years. And now you're starting to see a lot of athletes do it and a lot of other people who help people make weight, making them do it because they finally understand just how healthy it is. At the last second, you try to do all this on the work. Yeah, and, and you're right. And me being the person I am, I don't like extreme temperatures either way. I don't like it too cold. I certainly don't like it too hot. So someone like me, I'm not going to go into a polar plunge, you know, or when Shorty dragged me into cryotherapy, you know, I felt great after it, but I hated my life for the two or three minutes I was there. I'm the same way when it comes to the hot tub or the sauna. It's brutal. It's, it's not good. You know, not for me. I know that I know what the advantages are of it as far as health is concerned. I just wimp out halfway through. But one thing I do have to mention on a sidebar here, because I just realized, yeah, you're in Texas. If I don't mention this, Blake Stevenson's probably going to, uh, you know, beat my ass. I don't know if you've tried it yet, but I think you might have to make a trip to Whataburger at some point. Oh, man, let me tell you something. I was blessed enough to when I was first in camp with um, Hendricks to experience Whataburger. And I have to, I, I, I'm going to go on record saying I've, I've had Whataburger, I've had In-N-Out, I've had Smashburger, I've had Five Guys, I've had Shake Shack. Um, you know, Whataburger hands down, just all of them, I think it is the greatest one out of all of them. Um, there's a one burger place, and it isn't, I'm not sponsored or anything by any of these people, clearly, but there's only burger place that just trumps all of them, and, and that's, you know, stuffed grass-fed burgers in my home state of New Jersey, Montclair, New Jersey, grass-fed stuff, hands down. But if we're going chain to chain, Whataburger just, it just shits on them, all of them, and uh, I there, certainly have indulged in them. In the past, and in a, probably a few more days of getting used to Derek's schedule and, and mine, I'm certainly going to be hitting up Whataburger um, for me because I'm here for another few weeks. So uh, it's not going to be a once or twice trip. Um, I've already been there once so far, but you know, we won't tell anybody that. <laughs> there you go, Blake. There. I did it. Your boy came through. Moving on. So uh, looking at that fight card, Lou. You know, you're working with Derek Lewis going up against Ivanov here in the co-main event for the heavyweight division. But a lot of fights going on at UFC 244. That's going to be a hop, skip, and a jump away from where you're going to be. You know, your plan, obviously, is to be there with Derek. Um, which fights outside of the obvious one you want to see Derek knock out Ivanov? Which one really kind of grabs your attention because let's see you have Andre Arlovsky fighting uh you have Wonderboy Thompson fighting Kevin Lee fighting Gregor Gillespie which is going to be a just a brawl you have Kelvin Gaslam fighting Darren Till you know and then obviously Diaz versus Masvidal this is a loaded card I've been telling people it's probably going to be the card because of how great these matchups are um I was you know 
I was lucky enough to have worked with Kevin uh, in the past, Kevin Lee, and, and I got to meet Gregor when Shorty fought in Utica. Uh, super nice guy. Uh, that fight, I think, is a sleeper. Not a sleeper because people know, but like that, that fight is going to be phenomenal. I'm looking forward to it. I, uh, I hope Kevin, you know, doesn't have a hard time making that weight because if, if, as long as Kevin does what he needs to do and, and he's you know, good at making that weight, it's going to be an exciting fight. Um, you know I've worked with Orlowski in the past. I love Andre, man. I got nothing but love and respect for him. So anytime Andre fights, my eyes are glued to the TV, and I just wish him nothing but the best, and I'd love to see him get his hand raised. And uh, that, that, that Till um, Gasolin fight is going to be something special. I'm a big fan of, of, um, of Till and uh, get his hand raised. Well, Lou, it's always great catching up with you. I know that you've got uh, Derek that you're working with and, you know, a lot of stuff that's coming up for you. Like you said, you'll be working with Shorty uh, also a little bit after this camp and just everything going around for Nutrition and Lou Giordano. So, Lou, before we let you go, man, let everybody know where they can follow you, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, social media, as always. I appreciate it very much. And, uh, you know, Instagram is at Nutrition. And Facebook, also Lutrition. Twitter is at Lou underscore Trition. And my website is Lutrition.net. And, um, yeah, man, just tune in to November 2nd. And uh, if you really want to sneak peek as to what's going on in this camp, you know, follow me because I do post a lot of stuff on Instagram. And I'll keep you guys up to date and post it as to what's going on. And you kind of want to miss this. I'll go back and watch some of Derek's fights and then watch some of the footage that's being put out of him now. And you'll see a completely different version of Derek Lewis. And, um, yeah, man, it's going to be really exciting. And, and I'm just really looking forward to it. And thank you, Ryan, for having me on. I truly appreciate it. As always, you know, Lou, you're one of my favorite people ever. And, yeah, you're going to get me. I, I have the day off. You mentioned it. I'm just going to have to go and get myself an Instagram account there. Everybody's happy. You'll be able to find me on Instagram. I don't know how much posting I'm going to be doing. Yes, let him know. Attack him. Ryan needs an Instagram account so we can blow him up and get him on Instagram. And we're going to make him an Instagram famous model for sure. Well, Lou, you enjoy everything out there in Houston. Keep us posted. We'll be talking to you throughout the camp. Give our best to Derek. And uh, I think that's where we're going to end it. So uh, on behalf of Lou Giordano from MyMMANews.com, I'm Ryan Sprague. We'll see everybody November 2nd for the fight in Madison Square Garden. Don't miss it, folks. We'll talk to you soon. A huge shout out and thank you to Dependable Solutions. Innovating the future of your business, visit dependable-solutions.net to save your company money by reducing the markup percentage on your credit card processing fees. It's just that simple. Do yourself a favor, go ahead and check out dependable-solutions.net.